Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Creating Things Together. I am Christina. This is James. He is my co-host, my husband, my best friend. And Hello. this is the show where we talk about our creative pursuits together. We deep dive on all of the things creativity and really what's on our mind and what has been on my mind this week might be a little bit confusing, but once we start talking about it, you're going to you're going to get it. You're just going to it's going to make sense. I think uh, I think we uh, we put it into a good box a we, second ago when we were planning it. Okay. So I want to talk about personal investment. I'm not talking about your money. You don't need to pay me money if you want to. I mean, but... Next is personal hygiene. Yeah. Wash your hands, people. You guys are dirty. But... Um, the creative has a lot of problems with personal hygiene, especially when they work at home. Yeah, if you guys are watching the video version, Cooper is just perfectly framed up, making <laughs> love to his bone right now. Yeah, if um, you guys hear the sound of saliva and chomping, that's him. That's him. But we want to talk about personal investment, um, investing in yourself and your skills. And over the next couple of weeks, I want to talk to some of our other creative friends about this. But I want to establish a good brown i want to establish a good hey, listen brown listen <laughs> when i wake up in the morning it's like first thing breakfast second thing establish a really quality brown yeah yeah <laughs> i i don't know what i you was ever trying say to say something and then you go wait hold on that sounds like something completely different yeah, than what as, i meant to say there yeah that i was not trying to make a poop joke yeah it's <laughs> it sounded exactly like a poop joke yeah but anyway let's let's just get into it Okay. Let's just... All right. Christina. I don't know why. This is about keeping yourself accountable. Hello. You say mm -hmm. in your in, in our plannings. Should I just give the background of why I thought about this? Or yeah, should we go that'd be great. Let's, order? let's give a story. Okay. And um, I just want to say that this is there's going to be some valuable content in this podcast. Don't set them up for that, James. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Like, I feel mm -hmm. like we... I feel like we put together some some really helpful thoughts. Okay, so let me give you a little bit of background. It was the year 2020, the, the third month of the year, March, and the coronavirus plagued the world. This is not a joke. It's actually happening. And we have to stay inside. I'm slightly losing my mind because I'm an extrovert and I just love engaging with people and being anywhere but inside. Um, so I found myself over these past couple of weeks kind of sulking. I didn't mean to. I'm not the sulking type. No one means to sulk. Some people do. Oh, like if you just like the drama? Yeah. Um, but I found myself kind of in a funk, just uh -huh. feeling bad for myself, scrolling on Instagram. I can't tell you how many times Instagram notified me that I've seen the past three days worth of posts. <laughs> <laughs> Instagram was like, just get off. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for the engagement, but go. That's like your default comfort zone, right? Right. But during my binging of, I need this gif of Steve Harvey to go away. <laughs> <laughs> during my binging, I started learning about um, personal investments and, mm. you know, how to build wealth and how to make money essentially in your sleep, but not make it be a pyramid scheme. <laughs> right now, I'm also uploading a file to Drive because multitasking is very important. But as much as we love an, a good old white guy pyramid scheme. Yeah, right. Mm. Um, so I, I started learning about personal investments and becoming an investor. And James and I are officially investors. High five. Yeah. Um, we're it i don't we can talk about that later when i'm a little bit more schooled on it uh, a couple months ago we had a podcast with a friend of ours brandon from this is tech today i would highly encourage you go listen to that but i've just been thinking a lot about finances um and i thought wait a second i'm sitting here i'm not gonna curse on this i'm sitting <laughs> here with my behind on the couch kind of feeling bad for myself. Mm. I have a business. Mm. It's a fairly successful business for now. <laughs> and if I wanted to get venture capital money, which I don't, but if I wanted to go that route, would I invest in myself? Mm. Would, an in, would an investor, let's say you've got Christina A, Christina B. Christina A is the investor. Christina B is the creative person, creative entrepreneur, whatever. Would Christina A invest in Christina B? My answer was, hell no. You are sitting here scrolling on Instagram, Facebook. I don't even know I was on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Twitter. Twitter's where it's at. 
but I was just feeling really bad for myself. Mm -hmm. And I, that was kind of an aha moment of, um, hello, can you please get it together? Because like time is running out. Mm. I'm not dying anytime soon. I don't think, but at some point I will. And I want to like, just want to do everything at once. So it's almost like considering we work from home. Mm -hmm. This is our office. Bless you, Cooper. Oh, bless you, Cooper. Oh, oh he's yeah. so happy. He got rolled around because he just ate. I think that means he's trying <laughs> he to get the tail. blood off of him. Isn't that how that works? Yeah. Oh, heavens. If you, no, I was pointing at I his mean, tail. Co I'm sorry. I meant Cooper. I, okay. I'm, I was I saying all the it. family names by, by accident instead of saying the right name. Cooper, put your wiener away. No, I'm censoring him. Oh, look mm -hmm. at the tail. Okay, I'm oh, sorry. No, self-conscious. <laughs> so this is our... In our office, this place. This person. So it's place. like if a person in a in a blue suit came in, sat down with you, and said, "Listen, why why are you not going to fail in the next six months?" And you have to convince them. And you can't just want it. You're, meanwhile, you're over here with your phone scrolling. On Instagram, like, oh crap! There's a human here. Yeah. And we all forgot how to talk to people because COVID nineteen. Mm -hmm. I think when we all get back out in the world, we're going to be like. Beep boop bop. Uh, uh, L M N. Like I think, I th and and the good thing is that we have a podcast, so that we can at least talk to each other. Articulate words so that we don't lose that muscle. L -M -N. Very important. Practice your syllables at home to yourself in the mirror. It will do you great justice. Where were we? Um. So you have to. So you have to convince the person mm -hmm. that you are going to win but you have to be that person for yourself right and i've i was th i've been thinking about just kind of being accountable to myself i can't just want to make really good videos i need to practice on it and i mm -hmm. need to do something with my life mm -hmm. and i mean there's a point in like gaining inspiration and kind of feeding yourself creatively that kind of becomes unhealthy Mm -hmm. Like you, you can't, you got to stop doing Would what you Would you feel confident enough to invest in yourself at this moment? Um, a couple days ago, no. Okay. Um, honestly, money is pretty important. So if I'm trying to give myself 50 grand, I have more to prove to myself. Does that make sense? No, not quite. <laughs> Would I feel confident enough to invest in myself? Yes. We're talking $50,000. Yes. Would I feel confident enough to put $50,000 into whatever goal I want? Mm. This filming in the ocean goal mm -hmm. i would say no i haven't proved it yet oh that what an interesting way to look at that yeah i want to ask i want to ask our friends these questions and yeah. i want some freaking I'd honest put like, answers i put like maybe a thousand into me no we're talking fifty thousand dollars we're being our that's own. what i'm saying I'm, I'm saying i would not put fifty thousand dollars into myself well, you better get your crap I'd put together like a dude. thousand into me but that's because i think that's like a self-esteem but that's short term you issue gotta, like no nah, dude you gotta start thinking so yeah so i think people who do crazy things with money one of the things that i've learned about money is it's all about how you look at it it's all about how you, the perspective you have on the tool. People who make a lot of money and spend a lot of money have a very different perspective than a middle class family in Kentucky. And I think that that when you're thinking about investing in yourself, um, if you're not, if you are a business minded entrepreneur, huge opportunities ahead of you kind of person, mm -hmm. then you can you can think you're you're able to to think in that sort of way i'm going to throw $50,000 into the wind and hope the w the wind catches it and it flies into the waves and right i build i people get catch the money and then give me an investment back on them i don't know what are you talking about i don't about? know I, it really fell apart there at the mm -hmm. end um i just pictured a guy on a cliff letting money go like his grandmother's ashes <laughs> wow so where was i um so they're able to think about throwing fifty thousand dollars at themselves, whereas I I don't know about you, my brain doesn't work that way. My brain right. is like, we have this money that's a this very finite and easily removable resource from our right. lives, very easy to spend it, very hard to make it. Right. So uh, we have to be very frugal with it. But mm -hmm. if we're talking about investing in yourself. There's Maybe. a point where you have to be a little bit risky because investments right. are risky, but you have to put in the work to make the investment make sense. Mm. I've always been very frugal and I am natural. Like I still am. Frugal-lugal. Um, I'm a frugal-lugal. 
Um, so it takes a lot. And it's so funny. I'll save like pennies on toilet paper, but if I want to go like on a big trip to film something, I'll drop it in a second. Yeah. Um, but there's a balance in if I'm spending, let's say a thousand dollars on a trip, I've saved $5,000 somewhere over here, just mm-hmm. putting it that way. Mm. Um, and that's, that's how, that's kind of a short gist of how I view money. Long story short, I don't like to waste it. And James and I, at this point in our lives, we're able to take some pretty big risks, but I personally don't want to take those risks if I'm not putting in the right amount of work. And that's basically what I wanted to talk about today. Mm -hmm. So keeping yourself accountable. Now, like after this whole 10 minute diatribe, we're gonna go in the order of James's notes. James says, go ahead, James, say it. Oh wait, hold on. Oh. Well, no, one of the things I wanted to touch on before we get to what I think you're probably about to touch on, which is tips. No, I was I was going in the order of your notes. Okay, dude. we are yeah, we already worked through some of that. Oh, did we? So um let's go to uh No, we didn't. Let's, okay. So did we talk about companies want to see a specific metric? That was what I was gonna say is that was where we should land. We oh. should land on this this box right here. Great minds so, think alike. Yeah, companies want to see a specific metric. This is interesting foreshadowing be, um, for what we what I'm going to speak about later on in the podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, so, pe- people want to see what one of the things we learned from making this uh, video, this Equity crowdfunding crowd, video, which I don't even know if we spoke about on the podcast yet. We need uh, to make a whole video about that. Well, on our main channel, we spoke we've spoken about that more so far, and we plan to make more videos about it in the future, but. We made an equity crowdfunding video, mm-hmm. an ECC video. Think Kickstarter, but actually geared towards investors. Sorry, I had to stretch there. Right. Actually geared towards investors. Right. And what we learned from that was how investors think and what you need to put into a video. The first draft of the video was not what investors wanted to hear, apparently. Yeah. Uh, and so this the CEO let me know, hey, this is not, we're not telling them what they need to hear. So we had to kind of right. kind of rebuild the entire video from scratch. So, which we, that, what we learned, that entire like collaboration between the brand Ample and the Reds very was actually very positive. Yeah, no, it was very. I don't mean that in a negative way. It was yeah. very positive. But um, yeah, we had we had to build a video uh, in order to get that messaging across to these these folks. Yeah, and investors don't think the way that people wanting to watch a YouTube video mm-hmm. thinks. They want exactly. the bottom line. So we learned two things. One, was a little bit about what they want. Two, that they want something very specific. And if your messaging is not very specific towards their needs, they're going to be out. So if yeah. you can't specifically tell your message, then mm. how can they trust you with their money? So like think about Shark Tank. If, Shark you, Tank. if you watch Ooh. an episode of Shark Tank, their, their conversation is very specific. They're talking about very specific things. They're not talking about how much the person cares about their dog toy, their, their dog f- f- clothing business they care about how much money it's making uh what's their market share things like that so we learned that they want those specific things and i think that this sort of led to your thought process about investing in yourself and that you need to be pursuing the the specific metrics that are going I said to I'll help point. you. Yeah, they're going to make you want to invest in yourself. Right. Or at least make you actually be successful whether you ever have the self-esteem to invest $50,000 in yourself or not. Right. Um. So in another, like we have friends that tell us, they, they actually give really good YouTube advice. Um. Whether we take it or not is- By friends, we mean like our socks. <laughs> yeah, and our Cooper. We talk, we talk to them sometimes. Um, so whether we take their advice or I not- carrots is, as eyes. Would you be quiet- <laughs> Why would you use carrots as eyes? Carrots are clearly noses. I carrots as an eye, cucumber as a nose. Nah, man. And then the mouth as teeth. I found some teeth somewhere. Stop that. In the dumpster. Oh, stop it. That just makes me like. <laughs> you ever get that? What is it like the uncanny valley or whatever? Mm. Just thinking mm. about teeth. Get out of here. I'm sorry. You guys can just unsubscribe. The only teeth in the house are ours and Cooper's. The rest, yeah. the rest of I don't have a box of teeth somewhere. Okay, so what I what I had to I forgot what I was going to say, so I'm just going to move on. What I had to do that moment on the couch is I had to audit my time and the the amount of time that I was spending on certain things and just kind of start from scratch. Mm-hmm. We take this is what we take 
advice from our friends. And sometimes it doesn't really sit well with us because we're coming at this whole creative pursuit as creatives. But we also have to remember, we want to create a business out of creativity, really. Mm. Um, so there's some things that you have to do. Some that- Bob Ross some Bob Ross stuff. What? <laughs> we want to create a business out of creativity. <laughs> That's so not stupid. what you say to an investor. <laughs> happy trees, happy We're just trees. Let the creativity lead the way. Yeah, that's the problem. We shouldn't let the creativity lead the way to an extent. Valid. And so we, we like to do that as creators. We do. So, and I, I still don't have a solution to this. So please don't take anything what I'm saying as I'm a professional. I will point you to uh, what? What's that? Creator mindset? Is that the name of the? What's that podcast that John? Oh. We have a friend who has oh, right. a we have a friend who has a podcast which we'll have to link below. Write that as a note, please. Mm-hmm. Um, he made four whole episodes, really consistent. But those four episodes are actually just pure gold if you're a creator. Um, so I'd highly recommend you guys listen to Creator Mindset. And I'm I'm just when you want something really bad, you just you you'll find a way to get it. And that's kind of how I am when it comes to building a business out of creativity. We've done that to an extent in terms of our freelancing business and it's doing really well and I'm just so happy for now. I mean, businesses have highs and lows. Who knows what these next, um, who knows? Who knows what these next uh, couple months will look like? Um, But you can't kind of function out of fear. You have to just be very strategic and just make decisions and pivot, um, trim the fat. So we've, I have personally had to really audit myself and my time usage. I'm not great at this but i am doing better and i just need to continue doing Mm. better um one of the ways james and i like to um, audit ourselves is just time blocking so we have a calendar productivity app called tick tick we love it um and we just time block the crap out of our day Mm. um and sometimes we're a bit unrealistic in how long certain things should take um but the goal is to always get stuff done and if you find yourself in a moment where you're kind of confused in what you're doing during the day look at your calendar because Mm. your calendar has things for you to do yeah one of the things i wanted to say about time blocking was that in the pursuit of auditing yourself which can be a hard process might take a like a some sort of go on a walk or take a shower um and just think deeply wash your hands wash your hands while you're, in, while you're on the walk and in the shower and um and using using a calendar specifically to create time blocks is an interesting technique because what it does is it shows you it shows you what where your time is actually going because what you're going to do is you're going to compare yourself against that that collection of time blocks as you go through the day and you're going to realize oh crap I waste a lot of time. I am not where I need to be in my time blocks. Mm-hmm. I'm supposed to be editing a thing. I'm supposed to be editing thing two right now, and I'm on thing one. Yeah, right now on our time block is to edit this podcast, and we it's are just not recording it. Beautiful. So. Yes. Let's good. 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 Uh, real world example. Yeah. It hurts so a little bit. It's a good idea to time block to give you yourself a very honest perspective on what you're doing with your time. Now, Mm -hmm. time blocking is something that some people use and some other people don't use. I don't want you to think that because you time block today, you have to time block for the rest of your life. It's a good idea to time block, but if you don't want to necessarily pursue that route in terms of keeping yourself productive, I would say use use it specifically to audit yourself. Mm -hmm. Another thing that I think is a very useful thing to do because we lack self-awareness is to talk to a friend oh yeah now we me and christina like two hours today where we just have oh didn't do anything yeah that was actually right yeah it's which is so it was an hour and a half i mean we didn't watch netflix but it was you know we were not doing what we weren't set out to do let's put it that way yeah so me and christina like to have what i like to call a forced accountability where we're just constantly telling each other what each other is doing wrong. I'll tell James to fat shame me if I'm like having a Rice Krispie in the middle of the day. <laughs> is that bad? I mean, obviously not fat shame me, but 
like mm-hmm. just give me a side eye where I know that I did something naughty. Mm. But I'm sorry. Go ahead. Talk about like just the, the little bit of mm-hmm. that oh. that goes a long way in a, in a marriage. <laughs> now yeah. I think that this is a theory I have. I think that your mm-hmm to me means way more than my mm-hmm to you. Because if I do that to you, you're gonna be like, who the hell do you think you're talking to? <laughs> and you'll be fine. You might think about it, yeah. but you'll be fine. Whereas for me, that just that'll throw off my entire day. Why is she? Why is? Why is it? And I think <laughs> James not, has a more sensitive sen- heart than I'm me. I'm sensitive, but not only that, I think wives' opinions mean a lot to their husbands. Mm-hmm. A lot, but more, more than the wives realize, right? And that's the great. wives have the power. It's like um, the power of the power of the the life and death is in the tongue. That sort of idea. Okay, you the power of life that and death for is me. In the, mm-hmm. Yes, you can just give me a little bit of s- some sort of. You're not doing that well enough. <laughs> and I'm we were like, talking oh, about God. You were supposed to like edit a video by last Friday. Yeah, and you. Say so I say okay. When can I have it? And you're like by Saturday, and I'm like, um, what? <laughs> like, uh, yeah. I'm not good enough. Yep, and you'll never be because I want. <laughs> I'm I just don't, kidding. I love it's, James, and it's so funny. I give a crap about almost anybody's opinion in the world. Yeah, I mean, I, and I mean that. Me but and your mom. You, my mom, my mom. Yes, but if my mom disagrees with me, it's it's okay. Like mm-hmm. I, I, I really, we have the kind of relationship where I really appreciate her, her thoughts and her feedback. Mm-hmm. But if she disagrees with me on something, I don't think it would affect me in the same way that you would. It sure as heck doesn't feel that way, but uh, that could be another conversation. Yeah. You have no idea. And that's probably why you get so much pushback is because it's such a, an intense I mean, you're uploading me. The, you're uploading that video to your street photography channel and I'm just waiting for it to catch on fire but which one that one that you recorded in the room oh you think that because it's not photo walk it's gonna i you know my opinion on that so i so i I got it but but as a wife this is turning into a counseling podcast as a wife (laughs) james can't stop thinking about making this type of content no 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 no, not this type of content i'm i would love to do more live streams i know but that's 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 not a live stream this video is going to be hopefully 10 minutes long uh, hopefully you think i'm just gonna post the whole thing and no i don't know what you're doing james let's <laughs> talk about something else okay. so i think what i was saying was that i think my response to you which can be overboard sometimes mm-hmm. is because i'm feeling such an intense um reaction to what you're saying and so i have to try to compensate for that and fight mm-hmm. back i have to try to make sure that i'm being confident mm-hmm. when all of the confidence is being sucked out of my body at that moment i love you so, um, wow, be- you're really making me sound like a shitty because, wife. Because no, 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 it's <laughs> not. It's, it's not you. It's it's the way that wives affects their husbands. It's not you. It's just the way that you speak. <laughs> I it's get not, it. No, okay, I need. So, I need that. Gr- I need that. That uh, tension. You know yeah. What I mean? Right. So, um, anyway, what the my tip was to talk to a friend, find okay. a friend, sit down with the friend, uh, pick the most encouraging person the per- person who you are not scared to talk to about something like this person who won't say all the wrong things maybe your mother is not the right person to talk to about that for a lot of people uh they won't say the wrong things they'll say all of the they'll, they'll be encouraging and supportive but also challenging to you and they'll see your blind spots of which you have many as do we all and another thing that i wanted to touch on was not investing in the the wrong things and this goes back to the idea that we mentioned a second ago of um, focusing on a specific metric mm-hmm. or a specific set of metrics to please your investor self so um, what do you mean by that okay so one thing i've learned about james do, i'm building just, things in the world okay i'm sorry go ahead continue one thing you've learned about building things in the world you're on slack right now yeah i'm hustling okay i Uh, I felt like that was distracting you you're like one thing (laughs) oh no no no. i was just i was just thinking i was like looking at the table i'm handling business right now i just like silence it creates oh just stop go continue talk okay one thing you learned about (laughs) freaking hate you dude i learned that you can spend a lot of time working towards the wrong thing and you feel really good about yourself while you're working on that thing. 
but it's not the correct direction if, let me give you an example. If you want to make money immediately, the best way to do that get is yourself a to job. get a job. <laughs> it's not to edit a video. What? To keep editing your video, which you do every day. Now, the reason why we edit videos or whatever that means for you um, is because that's our comfort place. That's where we go to work. Like we're used to working on that thing and we mm -hmm. naturally gravitate towards that thing as creators. Mm -hmm. If you're a creator, we naturally gravitate towards our craft. But our craft is not the thing that makes us... Are you in a coma right now? No, I'm reading your notes and I think okay. it's just kind of funny. Can we just... Like, finish that point because I want to say something. Okay. Um, so... <laughs> I love you, by the way. If you're if you're a creator, you're going to gravitate towards the thing that you naturally do, which is creating. But that does not make you money right now. It might in the future. Right. But that does not make you money right now. That may not be how you start making a business, how you start actually building the financial part of a business. And it's so easy to fall into that trap and start working on the wrong things. Mm -hmm. And, and, and it's just the reason why I think it's important to bring it up is because it's something that we fall into without even realizing it. Like, for example, I will get absolutely obsessed with productivity apps. That's what I was laughing at. And yeah, because it's so ironic. Can I explain it? Sure. So James loves productivity apps. So in long story short, in the effort to be more productive, he wastes so much time just looking through the best and most efficient productivity I apps. I spent probably two hours last night. You should be ashamed of up, yourself. Up until my <laughs> eyes closed and then opened again to start fiddling around on my phone for the right productivity app. And then they closed. I did this two or three times. I was basically. Oh, was that what you were doing yes. last night? You were keeping me up. I don't know what the heck was I'm going so on. Sorry. That was, you went to bed probably at like 12 or 1. I, I, yeah. So this was the story. Of, okay. So. Oh my God. So that kept. Oh, what will happen to me. We to talk about this afterwards. <laughs> what will happen to me is I'll move. I'll. Right now, my obsession is note a uh, note taking app. Finding just the best note taking app. I can right find. now, six months ago, his I found obsession. Evernote, but but they just kept putting bam banner ads in my face. Okay, even so, though I already paid for it for the the next tier up, and it, it just infuriated me. But I'm I want to go back. It's so like, what was it's the deal a with last night? Relationship. Anyway, last night I was I was doing this thing that will happen where I go. I'm going to okay tomorrow. The, I, I'm trying to make sure I break this down in a way that makes sense. Break it down quickly. So, <laughs> Christina, it's a podcast. We can go as long as we want. Calm down. Okay. <laughs> All right? So. Um, Sorry, guys. We <laughs> and I know you're bored, but. <laughs> I'm like freaking checking my email now. Okay, check your email. <laughs> go ahead. I don't care. Enjoy. Delta Airlines. Look at that. Oh, What's no. going on over there? Don't worry about it. All right. <laughs> so, I, uh, where was I? I. What this thing, okay, I had this thing on, oh my gosh, let me pull myself together here. I have apps on my phone. <laughs> I have a phone and there are apps on it that are downloaded from an app store. The first two slots are normally my primary productivity apps. And those slots are my calendar app and my note-taking app. Now, when that, whatever note-taking app is in that slot, is the one that I deem worthy to be my note-taking app. I have other note-taking apps on my phone, but they're in a folder, they're tucked away. So what I'll do, I'm so curious, I need somebody to reach out to me on Twitter if, if you do this too, so I know that I'm not alone in this. I will take the note-taking app that I'm considering making my main one, I'll move it up to the primary position, and then I'll go, hold on, no, I think I wanna use the other one. I'll move the other one back. I think it's funny how you're looking at me as if you're talking to me and, and then I'm just scrolling. I'll, and then I'll go, oh my gosh. No, no, I'll, no, I want the other one. I'll move that other one back. And I, and I did this, I think, I think three times last night. You know what I thought I turned, was happening? I was sleep. I was going to sleep. The room was dark and we had our sound machine on and I opened my phone to move the app. 
This is going on in my head, and so I could not go to sleep. Do you know what I thought was really happening? What? You know how sometimes right before, like, we go to sleep, and but we know that we have to wake up early? I thought that you were just having a genuine hard time going to sleep last night. Mm. It got to a point that you were moving around so much that once I got comfortable, I felt you move, and I grunted. I was like, mm. Oh, okay. Yeah, normally, I listen for that grunt because yeah. I know that I've gone too far. <laughs> I don't, but I didn't want to be like frustrated with you because I assumed mm-hmm. that you were just genuinely having a really hard time going to sleep. Mm-hmm. That was so annoying last night, dude. I apologize. <laughs> you should really apologize. Do. Apologize um, again. I'm sorry. You're welcome. I'm so sorry. Wait, I failed. What? Thank you. You okay? May have the rest of you may have dinner tonight, and I and I I'll eat Cooper's dog food. Okay, that so moving well. forward. Let's do. Hold on, hold on. What happens is that <laughs> You're I still on this. What happens is that I will I will get stuck in this place. <laughs> She's leaning her cheek on her mic. <laughs> Your face is around the mic. It's so funny looking. Well, what will happen is I'll I'll spend this time picking out the best productivity app, and I and I start really. I mean, I can spend I can spend thirty minutes to an hour a day easy, just thinking about this and and meanwhile it's like all three of the apps note-taking apps that are on my phone right now if there's only three are perfectly capable of of having a note taken within them and i will have the organization i need and everything i need you know to feel pretty good about my life i will do that and i will not focus on the things that matter just like that was my point i'm done just Do whatever like, you want with the rest of this podcast. Just like how you spent 20 minutes explaining this one point. You focused on something that really didn't matter. <clears throat> I thought it was a great story. It's a great story. I'm glad that you said it. That oh. was hilarious. I hope some people laughed out there and there's value in laughter. There's value in laughter. And everybody needs laughter these times of days. Um, but moving forward. Yes. Talking again about personal, like just investing in yourself some things that will help you later in life yes investing in those things yes for me personally it's editing but not just editing actually being focused yes like being efficient with the amount of time that i spend editing yes Um, oh my gosh i'm just kidding i I just i caught myself saying yes to your earlier point and i was like that probably sounds wrong that i'm saying yes I want you to have that. I'm not saying that you're you're bad at editing and being so, focused at the same time. Another point that helps you focus on things, like just focus on the bigger picture, mm-hmm. is making phone calls. I don't know why you wrote that, but we'll skip it. <laughs> Keeping up with small <laughs> rough. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Go ahead. So why do you think making phone calls are important? Um, that just seems like, honestly, a waste of time unless you're keeping up with family. So it's doing things that will help you later. And one of the things that you have to do to build a business or accomplish your goals is reach out to the right people and make that a priority in your life as well and connect with the right people. Sometimes you have to make phone calls. Sometimes you have to make phone calls that you really don't want to make. Sometimes you have to make a phone call to go to the dentist. But that that works towards your goal in the end. Mm-hmm. And... I don't like making any phone calls. I've always hated phone calls. Right. You also don't like signing docu signs, and you need to do that. I don't mind that. I'm just so that would be like one of those small <laughs> relevant tasks that you need to do. Yes. Um, another uh, thing but, for but, me would be um, personally working out. That's very, very mm-hmm. important, just for my sanity and also for my focus level. Mm-hmm. If I have that exercise session kind mm-hmm. of in the middle of the day or whenever. Um, it really, it just really helps me. Yeah. Yeah. And so I was, what I'm, what I want to emphasize is that you have to keep up with all the little things in your life in order to get to your goals. Mm -hmm. And there's so many of them that will go away. And so you have to prioritize, you have to decide what is the right things to focus on and the wrong things to focus on. And you need to attach each thing that you're doing to, to your goal and see if it actually makes it there or not. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, totally. And so for us, working out has been a big one. I think working out is a good analogy for for doing things that will help you later because what we're trying to do is we're trying to be, for one, we're trying to be healthy so we don't die at 27, but 
we're also trying to become more fit. Yeah, you know, we need I'm to be to, able I'm to trying to get a six pack. Yeah, I'm trying. Well, I already have a six pack, so <laughs> and it's I'm, kind I, of a big deal. <laughs> um, but I want one of the reasons that exercise is important is because we're going to be spending a lot of time in the ocean and the That's ocean good. doesn't play no games. I don't mm -hmm. know if you knew that, but if you ask her, she don't play no games. No. Um, so I don't think a game has ever been played by the ocean. Nope. She's very serious about mm -hmm. business. So mm -hmm. we just want to be fit and it would be great if we could be in the water, but right now we can't. So, mm -hmm. you know, a workout inside that really makes your heart rate go up. Like exactly. we have yeah. some workouts where it's just kind of like, I feel like we're Strength. just kind of dicking around, not really, burning um our bodies um but yeah there's i i i don't know i just love those workouts yeah. where i feel where i see james's cheeks turn red yeah i'm like yep we're Let's doing go. it yeah and for me the workout is as much um mental as it is what are you looking at what's going on that is not correct i think you need to close your things christina i'm sorry i do need to focus we're here a, a work um a workout for me is as much mental as it is physical and a lot of the goal with the workout is to put myself in what i like to call the discomfort zone whoa to welcome embrace to the discomfort yes. zone i want to make a t-shirt with that on it one day by the way okay discomfort zone i Do love it. it tell it to your street photographer people i think the discomfort zone is so powerful mm -hmm. i think it is it is useful and it's the way to accomplish things mm -hmm. the comfort zone is so absolutely deadly right absolutely deadly absolutely deadly james how dead deadly is it a little bit it's absolutely and uh i i've i've learned that that whenever i put myself in a discomfort zone routinely it helps me be in a be in a much better place on a daily basis it helps me be ready to go into discomfort whenever i need to mm -hmm. um tony robbins jumps into like he has like a square bath outside of his house mm -hmm. that's on a beach, I think. He's got a couple. He has a square bath that's designed specifically for this purpose. Is it the size he of jumps, the ocean because he, he's a giant? It's the <laughs> giant it's, person. Yes, it's 45 feet does deep. Does he actually so that suffer he can reach from the bottom and still talk? Does he suffer he from di gi gi gigant Gigant gigantism? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, because if he does, then I'll feel really bad <laughs> for making... I know he had like a... Him. I think he had a... So I, I say I know. I really don't know, but I think I heard that he had some sort of um, throat issues, and that's why he... What does I, that I have to wrong. do with how tall he is? No, his voice. He just has a deep voice. He's got a very, very raspy voice. Okay. But he's a very large man. <laughs> he jumps into this cold water in the morning, uh, and I think the reason he does that is just to just to shock himself into the discomfort zone hardcore yeah and then he hits his day boom like i think he i think what happens is he he goes under and instead of coming back out He's he goes scared. into a tube and it shoots him out on stage <laughs> at one of his conferences that's why he comes out with so much and, energy yeah and if you guys haven't seen the documentary about tony robbins conferences they're uh, insane isn't there like some kind of conspiracy about lights it? Lights and people. I mean, he's like, he's like getting people to do the wave. He's like, woo! It's it's bananas. Yeah. What did you say? Isn't there some kind of conspiracy theory about his like? It's kind of culty. I thought I I saw mm. that on the documentary. Like, didn't he make somebody break up with like their girlfriend on the phone? Yes, he did. On the it was like on the phone live. He's not in a good counselor. The, he made him break. Dude, up. if you break up with me, like on the phone. Mm. I'd be like, are you at least filming? Like, I'm at a conference right now, and the guy, he's a motivational speaker. He just really wants me to break you up with you. You ever heard of him, Tony Robbins? No. Um, okay, well, anyway, he's really great. And he said that I have to break up with you, and I'm not happy, so bye. Click. And then everybody cheers in the background. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Anyway. So. Anyway, so yes, the discomfort zone is a very, very useful place, and I would say... Live there in little ways as much as possible, or in big ways if you want, as much as possible. Yeah. Um, I don't and, think that's a bad thing. Right. And like, and I, I'm experimenting with this idea of putting little tensions in your day consistently to make yourself to... We are each other's tensions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to, to make yourself 
But you, you know, I don't know. Don't take the easiest way to do so. I, I'm not sure exactly how that fleshes out yet. But does that make sense? You better not make my life hard, James. I'm not going to make your life hard. No, I, that makes person, sense. We're doing this to yeah. ourselves. Person. Inflicting pain. You're going to see me like, like jabbing needles into my arm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Discomfort. It's called acupuncture. It's actually really healthy for you. Mm-hmm. So, so the question is, <laughs> when you're in the discomfort zone, which you want to be a lot, and sometimes you want discomfort to be pretty strong. Like today when we were working out, it was, I mean, this is like level five of discomfort, right? That's not even, level four, it's, 3.9. Yeah, it's maybe. not that bad. But it's... No, level three. Okay, we'll call it, well, this is what we, okay. We'll call it daily um, daily discomfort. And then there's extreme discomfort. Extreme discomfort is you just fell into the Bering Sea because you're a crab fisherman and you were trying to string up the pots. Right? Yeah, but that's not something that you want to, like the discomfort zone is something you want to inflict on yourself. Okay, you're a fisherman. Okay. And you go out onto the deck even though it's cold and waves are hitting you. There you go. Maybe extreme discomfort, right? Yeah. There's certain things in life where it's like. You can't say you're you either, dying extreme discomfort. <laughs> <laughs> oh, duh. Uh, it's one of those things where you extreme discomfort is one of those things where when you experience it, two, one of two things happens to you. You either go, I never want to be here again. Or I so love what just happened to me. It was horrible, but I loved it. And I want to do that specific thing again for the rest. That's extreme discomfort. That reminds me of our free diving trip. That was extreme discomfort for both of us, but I loved it. And James was like, get me out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so daily discomfort is is a real, you know, is a hard workout. Now, th- today wasn't that bad. The first one was pretty tough. That's- and I went into it with a bad mindset to begin with. So that really screwed things up. But, um, but anyway... How to persevere in discomfort, and this is where we're talking about physical discomfort, but I'm talking about all the, the daily mental discomforts and the putting your head down and working and that sort of thing, small discomforts. Um, I would say that one of the major things that you will hear, even from people in the army that went through boot camp, is to overcome the step, not the goal. Ooh. Baby steps. Okay. That you can't look at the entire mountain. You have to look at the next step in front of you. Okay. That's you can cool. do that. You can you can look at that and go, I can take another step, right? Yeah. Now, this is an art form in itself because it's really hard to do that with your mind. But So if you're doing 50 burpees, try to do 30 burpees and then try to do 15 exactly. more. Exactly. And then you've got That's five it. more to do. Right. Or yeah, go, That's I'm going to get to 15. When I you know? used to work at like a day job Mm -hmm. that's how i went through my day i'm like oh my gosh it's two o'clock well that's only one hour until three which is only really an hour to four and then by four o'clock i've only got an hour left right right right. so right it's all Um, perspective yes so bite bite size chunks that's also how you accomplish um a a project anyway is especially when you're working on things like for us for for me i've spent a lot of my working life working on video projects that take some span of time to complete and it's not just uh i'm gonna send an email it's you gotta take a lot of things put them together and try to make it come together in the end in a way that makes sense mm-hmm. um so yeah make it bite size and then every day just chip away at it right ding, 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 is that what it sounds like like ding, this ding, ding. i want you to get that in your head <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Oh. that's what yeah. it sounds like right 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 sorry if that didn't sound like anything mm-hmm. so i think if you do that if you push towards the discomfort zone and then you you eat the elephant one bite at a time, you will start to accomplish things very slowly. That's mm-hmm. what we do on a daily basis. It's like I have a hard time with that perspective because I just want to do the goal. Yeah. But Oh, absolutely. The yeah. the little things are important too. And that's what one, one thing that I've been having to practice during this time of quarantine is really kind of shifting my perspective. I can't get out on the ocean right now and I probably can't for the next month and that really sucks. Even Mm -hmm. if I didn't have a trip planned, just knowing that I can't do it makes everything suck a little bit more, but shifting my mindset and going, okay, I wanna be making these really cool like episodic film things, Mm -hmm. right? I need to just get better at filming and Mm -hmm. filmmaking and crafting a narrative from start to finish. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of one thing that I'm going to be practicing over this next month. And hopefully by the time May is around, we've got it all together. <laughs> Probably not though. Uh, how do you feel like your 
faring at this point? I know that about four days ago, you were kind of really in a tough place. Yeah. I go through highs and lows personally. Um, James has been chilling throughout this whole quarantine. Like he's just inside, not talking to people. Like he's doing good. I did a live stream probably a week ago and I got my fill. Yeah. So I'm good for another six months. Me on the other hand, like I really need interaction with people. So on a personal level, I have been getting out once a week to hang out with a friend at her house. She is completely quarantined. I am completely quarantined, so I feel comfortable doing it. Um, Just honestly not being an idiot about my outside consumption and um, really taking a step back and looking at what we're doing, big picture, 30,000 foot view, and just writing down what my goals are, like a sentence behind each thing that we're doing. So James and I are doing five things at any given point in time, sometimes more, and just really defining what that is and what Mm -hmm. the steps I need to take in order to convince my investor self, Christina A, um, that Christina B has it together and she is pursuing things and she's not just kind of feeling bad for herself. Mm. So that's what I was doing. Mm -hmm. That's how I've been doing. I've also, apparently I had, I don't even want to call it an anxiety attack because that's a bit much. An anxiety fit. An episode. An episode where like we were watching um, the uh, coronavirus press conference and I felt like like in the back of my lungs. I was so short of breath. I honestly thought that I had coronavirus. Um, we and I had couldn't. it for like 30 seconds and then boom, just well in and out. Yeah, right? Done. Yeah, get my antibodies. Um, but no, I thought that just something was not right. Yeah. I couldn't focus. We were doing meal prep. And at the end of meal prep, I just sat down, called Cooper on the couch, cuddled him, put on Tom and Jerry, and just took a 30-minute nap. Mm-hmm. And then I felt better. Yep. But um, apparently that was anxiety, and I am having a conversation with apparently whoever. Apparently I experienced anxiety today. <laughs> I don't really feel, I don't really, I mean, I feel anxious sometimes, but not mm-hmm. like not like something triggers it. I just feel anxious because, you know, I'm busy with a ton of stuff and oftentimes I'll feel it like in my throat, Mm. not like my throat is closing, but I just feel it. I feel my pulse in my throat. This time I felt in the back of my lungs Yeah, and I was like, I don't know who this anxiety chick is, but she needs to leave my (laughs) house. Anxiety, Christina, goodbye. Yeah. I, (laughs) yeah, there's things that I'm figuring out with that whole thing, but, um, yeah. Well, you're doing good. I think it's a good place. I, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, I think for me, a huge you're part- You're kind of having a little creative life crisis though. I, yeah, I was having a creative life crisis a couple days ago around my content and what I'm doing. And I don't know those why. happen routinely. Yeah. And But when those things happen, it's like it's like growing pains, but it's, it's, like, it's almost like when if the kid were to come out and then let's say they hit you know six years old and then they start going through their- their um their growth cycles like you know how what are you talking you about you know how like bugs morph into like they shed their skin so they have a, they have like a big episode of shedding their skin and they yeah. move on if we as humans went through these growth cycles instead of growing continually where we just had this this three days of where you morph just, from a three-year-old to a six-year-old <laughs> <laughs> that's disgusting right mm-hmm that's kind of what my creative life crisis has become. Right. Where I have three days where it's just, I just can't, I can't have a break so I can't figure it out. Mm-hmm. And then I reach the other side. I either have a breakthrough or I, or I, everything just kind of calms down enough for mm-hmm. me to, you know, make it through the next one. F- figure, figure, you know, for me to, to, I thought you were, get at, things together a little bit in my head. At and, first, I thought you were implying that a six year old goes through puberty. And I'm like, what the hell are you talking about, dude? <laughs> you know like you kind of gave off a puberty vibe with that okay. analogy just so you know okay well but metamorphosis gave the, the bug analogy sometimes you just need a bug analogy sometimes you just need a bug analogy exactly. um so what i did was in that in those mo- what i do in those moments is i have that growth spurt i come out the other side and then i've learned some things right and it's so interesting to me how that happens yeah. i think it's really useful Mm-hmm. I think that it's not something to be afraid of, it's, but it's just tough, tough to deal with. Mm-hmm. But anyway, this is a good place to wrap it up. Uh, I think Christina wants me to stop talking now. So if you are going to speak, I need you to speak down the barrel of the microphone. 
you know stage etiquette. Well, I you know, I know that, like but I'm this. also having a conversation with you. I, I'm not over there. I'm not. What you, you were about? pointing that way. Oh, well, you kind of are over there on the screen. <laughs> Down the barrel, James. All right. Guys, thank Hello. you so much for listening to this podcast. Uh, it was a little bit all over the place, but that's how we are. Uh, hopefully it gave you some insight into, I guess, where we are creatively during this weird time in history. Um, and hopefully it helps you out, um, mm-hmm. figure out what you're trying to do with your creative life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I sound like Sarah, that creative life. I can freaking quote her intro. I've edited it so many times. Mm-hmm. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed the podcast, make sure to rate and or review it on um, uh, all the places that you listen to podcasts. Mm-hmm. And also subscribe wherever you rated and reviewed it. Subscribe mm-hmm. wherever you were. Mm-hmm. But I wanted to say one more thing uh, towards the YouTube channel. Okay. If you guys have not found us on the YouTube channel, we are also on YouTube. And if you subscribe there, that would just make us very happy. Yeah. And that's a good place to comment as well. Um, Share your thoughts about whatever episode. With podcasts, you can't just put a comment underneath the the podcast episode, right? No, you can't. They haven't come up with that yet. Mm -hmm. It needs to happen. There needs to be like a YouTube-esque podcast experience. Mm -hmm. I think, you know what? There is. Because I think SoundCloud is an example of where where you can, um, you can actually like put a, a tag mm-hmm. at the exact point in the podcast in the, in the, in the audio oh yeah you can and, okay and that's yeah. pretty cool like i, I wish cool. that was a more popular thing yeah but no yeah, but anyway apple podcast is not um, spotify or soundcloud so all right stay healthy <laughs> have a great week and or weekend yeah bye bye